In the words of a famous Jedi Master, No, try not. Do or do not. There is no try. Spin it. Hey DMD family, welcome back to another Discs MD video. Bunky here, and today we're going to be talking about throwing a disc far, which we all want to do. How do we do that? Well, I'll tell you how you do it. Stop trying. <laughs> Stop trying to throw it far and just throw it far. Here's what I mean by that. And I'll speak from experience because I, I'm, I'm not going to impose what I do on you. So I'll tell you from my experience. When I tried to throw far, what I do is tense up, right? I need to rip this disc from here, 500 feet, and I tense everything up. And that completely defeats what I'm trying to do because it takes away from the mechanics of a backhand throw. It causes me to lean forward. It causes me to turn my head. It causes me to lean back causes me to do all these unnatural things in order to get this little 170 gram piece of plastic as far that way for you right handers as far that way as we can but the way to throw far is not trying to throw far the way to throw far is to have good form because this is not a 150 pound boulder that we have to pick up and hurl we don't throw this in the same manner as a heavy object because it's not a heavy object. So what does it take to throw this far? It takes speed. It takes velocity, right? Speed, velocity, different things. Go look them up. I had to, right? Speed is the time it takes for an object to travel a certain distance. Velocity is the time it takes for an object to change positions, right? So rotational velocity translates in this disc speed. So what does it take to increase my rotational velocity? That's what I have to work on. And I'll tell you what it's not. It's not tensing my upper body as hard as I can to just work the disc. That's not what it is. It's our form. So what is it about disc golf form that allows us to throw or allows pros or allows anybody to throw a disc far? It's the chain reaction that it takes. There's a small group of coaches that I listen to now, and it's grown, uh, and I've interacted with all of them except for one. Thank you, Mr. Tractor Trailer, using your Jake brake to go down a slight incline. That's weird. Anyway, so there's a small group of coaches that I now listen to a lot, watch a lot, uh, and again, I've interacted with all but one of them, because uh, the one I just found out about just started watching him. Um, and I'll link them all down below. You know, I work with Josh from Overthrow and I've worked with Yanni from Spin Doctor in the past. Uh, I've started talking to Clint over at uh, It's Blitz. I've started talking uh, to, and I cannot remember his first name for the life of me, but Trey Boucher, uh, Disc Golf. And now the latest one that I found was Nick Crush Disc Golf. And Honestly, if Crush is your last name, good on you. That's an awesome name, Nick Crush, especially for a disc golfer. Um, you will find very good attention to detail over structure and mechanics of good form in disc golf. And it's key to us throwing well because generating rotational velocity or rotational power is a chain reaction it starts with a single point of contact. And I think Yanni talked about this in his, in his most recent video. A single point of contact, which is our front foot. And this goes for every single sport that has a rotational movement. So you think about a baseball throw. You think about a baseball swing. You think about a tennis forehand or even a backhand. You think about a javelin throw. You think about throwing a punch, um, a slap shot in hockey, well, any rotational move, power rotational movement starts in the same place. The lead foot pushing against the ground, ground forces. 
the chain reaction then goes from the ground upward. So your power, yes, comes from your legs, your quads, your hams, your glutes. Your rotational velocity comes from the elasticity and the response uh, of your upper body muscles. Those working in concert in a good timing pattern is what we need to work on in order to throw far. It's not cranking the disc. It's all chain timing from the ground, through the leg, up through the pelvis, up through the torso, into the shoulders, into the arm, into the disc. And it all starts, and watch, Trebuchet has a video on this he put out just recently. And I love, love his one, one foot uh, drill. It all starts pushing against that front foot, pushing against that front foot, which rotates the pelvis, which rotates the core, which rotates the shoulders, which slings the arm through the shot and hurls the disc forward. And the faster we can rotate, the faster our disc will go. But it doesn't come with forcing it. It doesn't come with tensing our muscles. It actually comes from muscle elasticity and looseness in the upper body. Um, I've, I've been working on this recently uh, because I caught myself, as soon as I go into my X step, I start tightening everything up. I tighten my core up, I take my chest up, I take my back up, I tighten my shoulders up. I tighten everything up to get ready to, ready to hurl this disc and it's just not working. But lately, I've been going into my X, X step and telling myself consciously, keep the upper body loose and focus on driving that front foot into the ground and spinning yourself with the front foot. Keep this loose. For now, I'm just keeping this loose. Drive my foot into the front ground and turn myself with the brace, with the ground force of the brace. And let me just interrupt myself real quick. Uh, just a little tip for you to know, if you are using your ground force, your brace, as your catalyst for your speed. If after a field work session or a throwing into your net session where you're throwing drives at say 75% or greater. If after a good session of doing that, your front hip and glute uh, and lower back, I'm, I'm, I'm supposing, but more your glute and your hip are not sore, then you're not using your brace correctly. Your hip right here, this should all be sore after a a good session of throwing hard. So that's when you know you're using your brace correctly. If we focus on our form, if we focus on our timing, the rest will follow. We need to stop trying to throw hard and start trying to perfect our form. That comes with its own dangers that I'm gonna talk about in my next video, which I've also fallen prey to. Go to those other guys, and I'll start putting out some videos on this as well um, because I, I'm working on it, uh, it myself and have found uh, things that, I, uh, that I'm focusing on that may help you, but that's not this video. Go to those other guys as well. Uh, look, watch their videos and, and, and see that they're saying the same thing. It's all driving mechanics from that brace to force rotational velocity to get this thing to go as fast as humanly possible. Stop trying to throw hard and start trying to throw right. That's all I have for you today. I hope this helps you. Um, if you're struggling with getting the distance that you want, hopefully this sheds some light on it and maybe helps you change direction in, in your approach to throwing farther distance. Uh, I know it can't help, it can't help but help me. Um, and I've already started seeing a little bit of a, a change in mindset um, when I go to, go to throw the disc and hopefully distance just comes more easily. Until next time, enjoy the journey. Here's your verse of the day.